Hey everybody, it's day 98, and it's, I almost said January, it's not, it's February 2nd. Uh, it's such a nice day outside, I've gotta say, like, I know you can't see, but I'm in a crop top, I don't have socks or shoes on, like, it, uh, it's so nice, I'm so into it. It is 60 degrees, and it's gonna be like that for the next couple of days, and I am just, I am here for it, so, yes, thank you, weather. Um... Yeah, so it's been a pretty casual day. I was supposed to be hanging out with Marin and Jack, but Jack got grounded, so it doesn't look like we're doing that. Um, so I am washing sheets today, and I still haven't put away any of my Christmas stuff that I got, so I'm going to put all of that stuff where it needs to go. I'm going to work on some homework. I'm going to spend lots of time outside. I got new trampoline springs, so I put those in, and I jumped like well over an hour, hour and a half or so. Which was fabulous, and yeah, I'll probably do my homework outside. Maybe I'll do some reading outside, I don't know. But take advantage of the warm weather. <clears throat> my goodness, my voice is just like ugh, all over the place. So, yeah, that's kind of a quick update. I'm working tonight, and then tomorrow it's going to be super nice again. And it's the Super Bowl, which I don't really care about, but, like, it'll be fun to, like, watch the halftime show and eat food and socialize with our neighbors and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's uh, the minute and a half, 90 second um, update. And here is this, like, pre-recorded video. As I said yesterday, I had... I wanted to sit down, I had a couple minutes, and I wanted to sit down and talk about something that, like, I was really passionate about and that I cared about, so I did, and I just, as you can see, I'm super passionate about this topic, and so it just went on and on and on and on, and I didn't want to, like, cut myself short, and at the same time, I didn't want to include it with the footage I had already filmed yesterday, because that would have been too long, so I decided to, like, film today so that it could still fulfill that goal of filming every day. So here's that filming introduction, but the video you are seeing was actually filmed yesterday. Like, the footage, the content part, I guess, of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my introduction so that you can get into a topic that I am super, super excited and passionate about. So as many of you know, I want to be a doula. Um, along with maybe a marriage and family therapist. The thing is, I love working with families. I love working with kids. Um, I like working with couples. Yeah. But one thing I'm super interested in, hence why I want to be a doula, is I find the idea of having a baby, like, super cool. Like, wow. Like, I'm just always blown away by the fact that, like, our bodies can do this. We can grow another human being in our uterus, and we can feed it, and it can sustain itself. Um, you know, like, our bodies can sustain our life while, like, feeding into growing this other person um, for, like, nine months. That's just, it's insane to me. So I'm kind of blown away by it. And I'm always blown away by how, like, strong and powerful women are. Like, giving birth, I think... It says, naturally, is the, the second most painful pain a human being can ever experience, aside from being burned alive. Like, it's fucking painful. But I'm just, like, blown away by how strong and how powerful women can be when they deliver. So, um, yeah. Also, I've just always been, like, kind of obsessed with the idea of being pregnant and, like, giving birth and being a mom. Like, even as a little kid, like, I would just carry around baby dolls. I would always stuff my shirts to make it look like I was pregnant. Um, nowadays, I always ask my mom every time it's my birthday to tell me her, the birth story of me. And I'm always asking other people, like, tell me a birth story. Tell me a birth story. I want to hear about all these births, you know, and pregnancies. And I watch, like, those kinds of videos on YouTube. I follow several accounts on Instagram, like the Empowered Birth Project, Birth Without Fear, Home Sweet Home Birth, and then like Doulas International, and lots of other like doula um, organizations. Anyway, the whole reasoning why I want to be a doula and all that stuff, I will link that video below because I've already talked about it. But that's just a mini overview right now. So I just kind of want to share. Someday, I'm not pregnant, <laughs> um, someday I hope to be pregnant and I hope to have a baby and become a mom. And I know that this, these plans will probably change as I learn more, as I hopefully get doula certified, as I hopefully witness more births and get to be more hands-on, and as I 
learn and grow and age, I'm sure that these plans will change and vary. But as of right now, here is my 20-year-old self. Like, this is stuff that I want to um, have for my birth. So I have written it down. I'm here to share it with all of you. Okay. I really want a home birth. Um, yeah, not going to lie. I don't like hospitals, and they scare me. And, like, giving birth is scary, even to somebody who wants to be a parent and who wants to, like, who's, like, very passionate about it, like I am. Like, it's scary. I will be scared. It's going to hurt. And it's so new, and so many things can happen. And normally it's totally fine and very safe and whatever, but, like, it's still, like, it's unpredictable, right? Like, and I want to be in a place where I feel secure and safe and loved, and that's going to be at home for me. If, if the baby is in a position that is dangerous to the baby or myself, I will... I'm not going to be this person who is, like, gung-ho, like, must deliver at home. Because as much as I want it, the life of my baby is way more important to me. And so if there is going to be complications, I won't have it at home. And I will try, first of all, to fight for a birthing center because I like the idea of it being medical and having that support. But at the same time, like, it's not a hospital where, like, anybody and everybody can be who is sick or hurt or injured. This is a place specifically for birth. It's a bit more homier with the medical stuff included. It's a step in between home birth and hospital. I would also prefer to have a water birth. Um, and that goes for even being like in a birthing center if it was possible to have a water birth there or a water birth at the hospital. Like regardless of where I deliver, I want it to be a water birth. I think that water is soothing it's relaxing and it's going to be nice and warm and hot and I have always found that when I'm like having bad contractions with my endometriosis that being in water is super relaxing and comfortable um, and so I think it'll help do some pain relief and um, I just enjoy that better and I think it's a better transition for the baby because they're going from some like cold wet place <laughs> not cold, warm, wet place to a warm, wet place in the pool before being, like, brought up into this world. Like, I feel like being birthed, delivered, or whatever, is kind of traumatic. Probably why we don't remember it for the most part, you know, like, it's, you're going from this, like, enclosed, tight, safe place inside your mama to this huge world, which is a scary big place. <laughs> and I think it might be an easier transition if you are exiting the womb to be in a warm wet tub for like a few seconds before being brought up to breathe. So that's another uh, reasoning there. I want it to be a natural birth. I know that like if I were to have to have a cesarean, you know what I mean, then it's obviously not going to be a natural birth, but um, I don't want the use of an epidural. And if I had the chance and the choice, I would like to deliver vaginally, but I know that things happen. And if a cesarean is what's going to keep me and the baby safe and healthy, then that's what's going to have to happen. I do want a midwife and a doula present. Um, even if I'm at a birthing center, I would prefer a midwife and a doula instead of a doctor. Um, there's nothing against OBGYNs, but I think that they come from a different standpoint. I think that doctors are, well, they have a medical brain. That's what they're trained for, and that's not necessarily bad. Um, it's, it's not bad at all, honestly, but I want to look at birth as a holistic view. If you think about it, going to the hospital and having a doctor present at a birth is relatively new, honestly. Um, uh, even like a hundred years ago, so many women were just having babies at home and like that was their thing. And I know it was a lot more dangerous and riskier, but um, we made it this far in the world, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of prefer to view it as a holistic thing. Like, I see doctors and hospitals as something that you use and go to when you are sick or hurt. Like, for real, you know? Like, and I don't see birth as being sick or hurt. I feel, I view it as this very natural thing. Now, with that being said, uh, complications can arise and it can turn into a medical thing. And so I do think it's you know, you have to weigh your options. If you think that, they, that it will be, like, a complicated birth, then I think maybe having a doctor present would be important. But, um, for the most part, I think some midwives do have medical training. Um, so 
you know, it's not like it's just some random person, but I want it to be someone who, like, has a more holistic approach. So, and I want a doula present just because I think that doulas offer a lot of emotional support. Even if I am a doula myself, like, I want that support for my my own birth, and I still want the support of my, my husband and, you know, maybe a friend or two or my mom or somebody, right? Like, I still want those supports, but sometimes I want, like, a support system who is not related to me or isn't, like, necessarily emotionally attached because I think that that brings in um, some good factors. Plus, they have some more expertise than, like, the average person. So, um, I do want a small, small support team present. I kind of either want it to be just me and my husband, or I want, I, I have a hard time saying no to people. So part of me almost only wants it to be me and my husband. It's also easier to kind of just focus on one person. And I'm definitely of somebody who would, like, even in that situation, be like, who all is here? I want to, like, include everybody and socialize with everybody while I'm having a baby. Like, so part of me only wants it to be my husband, so I'm not, like, having to say no to people, too. Like, if my mom's here, then what if my husband mom, husband's mom wants to be there, but I don't want her there? Or, like, something like that, you know what I mean? Like, um, then it makes me feel bad, and I don't, I don't, I just don't want to go down that path. So, I don't know exactly who I would want to be there. I know definitely, like, I want my husband or my partner or whatever to be there, um, as well as a midwife and a doula. I'm not so sure I want my mom or my dad or in-laws or brother or best friend or sister-in-law. I don't know. I don't know. And it's not like I have a problem with people watching me give birth. Like, actually, I don't care. Anybody could do it. Anyone could totally watch me give birth. I don't give a crap. It's just, like, at some point there's going to be, like, a time when I'm going to be upset and, like, hurt and, like, maybe not want to be around people at that time. So I want to be, like, hesitant on who is there. And I also have a, know myself and know I have a hard time saying no. So part of me is kind of just, like, nobody's coming except for the dad of this baby. In early and mid-labor, though, I kind of am cool with anybody being there. If my parents want to be there, if my in-laws want to be there, if, like, siblings and, um, you know, friends and whatever, anyone. I kind of do want it to be, like, a social event. I, I'm excited. We are bringing life into this world. It's an exciting time, and I want to celebrate myself and celebrate that baby, and I think it's, like, cool. We should have a little party, you know what I mean? Like, and so in mid and early labor, anybody, like, come on over to the house, let's cook food, let's sit around, let's talk, let's play board games, let's do a puzzle, let's sing songs and watch TV and tell stories, like, I do, I want it to be very relaxed, and I think it's a better atmosphere than me, like, freaking out, I think it'd be a great distraction, it's good support, you know, and, like, if I need to be like, okay, we need to take a break while I have a contraction, you know, it's, it's cool, but I, I kind of like the idea of, like, telling the story someday to my child and being like, we were all just so excited for you to be there and we were just like hanging out and celebrating your life. I wanted to switch lights because um, the sun is moving over there and it was starting to cast weird shadows. Okay, so um, I also definitely want to walk. I'll do a lot of walking and labor to try to like get the ball rolling. I want to have a birthing ball present. I think that like, like this. I think that this would help take a lot of pressure off of like my back, my tailbone, you know, all that good stuff. I want to have essential oils present. I want it to be a very earthy, holistic approach to delivering. So using essential oils for pain relief and meditative states and relaxation. I want nature noises in the background. So like ocean waves or rain or streams, you know, I love that thunderstorms just like have that kind of going in the background. I want dim lighting. I don't like bright lights. I want candles so that they smell good and have little lights. I want fairy lights. I want lamps. Just like kind of get into the most relaxed atmosphere possible because I think that that has such a huge heavy impact on me, on the birthing team, on the support team, and on the baby. Ultimately, everything comes down to if I'm stressed, like, if other people are stressed around me, I'm going to be stressed. I'm already in a stress state. Um, and ultimately, if other people are stressed, and if I'm stressed, baby's going to be stressed. I want it to be as relaxed as possible. 
because it's already a stressful situation. It's already scary. It's already painful. It's already intense. Why add it? You know, let's make everything else as smooth sailing as possible. I want flower petals, petals in the pool. Like, seriously, I want to make this a beautiful space where this baby is coming. This is the baby's first um, time in the world. I want it to be beautiful. And maybe that sounds silly, but I really want it. I want the baby to come in here and just see that it's a beautiful place to be. Like, we have candles and pretty lights and and flower petals and it smells good and there are soothing noises and we are all just joyful and excited for that baby to be here. I don't want another sex of the baby. So that's kind of more of a pregnancy thing. There are a few things in here that are more like pregnancy related, but I definitely don't want to know the sex of the baby. I want to be excited and surprised. And also, it comes down to it doesn't really matter. You know, we have placed such an emphasis, and this kind of goes into a political stance, so I'll be brief here, but like, we place such an emphasis on gender in our culture, and the bottom line is we're all humans. And it doesn't really matter if you've got a penis or a vagina. It doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to raise a son the exact same way that I'm going to raise a daughter. And I'm going to give them the same opportunities. They can play with the same toys. They can wear the same things. I don't care. So it doesn't really matter. And I think it comes gendering a baby and a child and, like, kind of enforcing those gender stereotypes starts way early. It starts right when you find out when the baby what the baby is and if you tell anybody then they're going to start to give you those stereotypical things because not a lot of people have the same uh viewpoint as I do as um you know everyone's gonna be like are you having a princess or a little you know football player and I know if the boy wants to be a princess cool if the girl wants to be a football player cool I don't care it's a human being and I'm going to support them as a human being so I don't want to know the sex of the baby. I personally would like to deliver the baby myself. I think that might freak some people out. But, like, it's my baby. I don't want a stranger. Or my husband, if my husband wants to be a part of it. I think that's kind of cool because he doesn't get to birth the baby. <laughs> um, and so, like, I want him to feel as included as possible in this process. And, like, he doesn't, he's not pregnant and he's not delivering the baby. And I really think that, like, it would be super cool if he reached down and, like, caught the baby and helped bring him up or if we did it together or if I did it but I don't want no offense to the midwife or the doctor or whatever I don't want them to be the one to do it like they're strangers they're cool people and I appreciate their support I want to be the one to do it or I want my husband to be a part of this process and do it um you know we made that baby and we put it in me <laughs> and I I want to be the one to bring it out too. I want to delay the clamping of the uh, cord because I think it's so fast for people just to delay the clamping of the cord. And there's so much nutrients still, like you know, being supported through that cord. And so I just I want to delay that, and I want to um. I don't. It's such a jolting process of like you're in mom, and then you're out in this world, and we're cutting the cord, and we're doing this, and we're cleaning you off, and just like. Let's take it slow. Like, let's deliver the baby, deliver the placenta, wait until, like, some people will wait a couple hours to clamp the cord, and that's fine with me. Like, just delay the clamping a little bit, and um, do some skin to skin with me and the baby, with the dad and the baby. I think that that is so important. Get those oxytocin vibes in, um, and I think it's really important for bonding on both the mom and baby and the dad and baby. I want to also delay the first bath as well um because I want the nutrients like um they call it birthday frosting it's really gross it is I know but like it's those are like that's nutrients that can be rubbed into the skin of the baby and like all this stuff can have lifelong effects I want to set my baby up for ultimate success in life and so I'm gonna do everything that I can to make sure that this baby's getting all those loves, all those important bonding moments, all the nutrients, just like everything that they possibly can get in that first few hours of life because it's vital. It is. It's so vital. This is some other kind of maybe silly ones, but I want to have my hair done. Like when I am, you know, in those kind of early stages of labor and I'm like starting to get nervous or I'm in like a little bit of pain, I want my friends and my family to be like brushing it and braiding it. I want to look pretty when I have a baby and like I know that sounds like vain or naive, but I have always 
I've always been a person who, like, if I look good, I perform well. Like, in school, in presentations, in work, in, in like, cleaning the house. Like, I like to look good, and I know that, like, it gives me a certain level of confidence, and I feel better about myself and about whatever I'm doing. And why would I not do that in such a, like area where I need to perform well and do well and have those com that confidence. So I want my hair to be done and I want it to look nice. Plus it's super soothing. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that like having my hair done is the most relaxing thing for me on the planet. Like I sometimes it's hard for me not to fall asleep. Like someone will just be doing this and I'll just be like I'm gonna fall asleep like right there. So it also is just a nice like soothing thing during a stressful time. On top of that I want a pretty bra. Um, I do. I want a nice, pretty bra because that's what I'm going to be wearing. You know what I mean? I'll be sitting in that tub. I'll be naked from here on down. And I want to have a pretty bra. And it kind of goes back to that same thing of confidence and feeling good about myself. And hey, I am giving birth and I want to be treated like a goddess, okay? So if I want my hair done and if I want to have my nails painted or if I want a pretty bra, like, I, you better believe I'm going to get that for myself. So, Absolutely. I also want a birth photographer and a videographer. I want it recorded, and I want it done tastefully and well done. I don't want it, somebody just, like, having a camera and recording the birth. Like, I actually want it to look nice, and I want it to be kind of, like, I would probably edit it myself if I could, and just, like, edit the labor and the delivery and the um, post-birth thing. So I want that, and I want, like, definitely professional pictures being taken. Um... I think if I had to pick only one, I would pick the birth photographer and then just have somebody else videotape it. Like, even though I love a videographer, but, like, having the pictures is a bit more important to me. Like, professional pictures are a bit more important to me than a professional video because I could just, I could just have somebody record it and then I could do the editing myself. As for cutting the cord, I don't think I actually talked about that. I want my husband to do it or for me to do it. I think it would really be cool if my husband helped deliver the baby or if my husband... Um, cut the cord because I really want him to be involved in the process as much as possible but it has to align with his comfort level so if he's not comfortable no big deal I'll do it I will get right in there and do it I also want to begin nursing right away um I think that that's a super important bond and I think that like breast milk is best way I mean that's not to say that people who use formula are bad parents at all because I don't think that at all 100% but for me I want to um use that liquid gold it's uh you know I think the earth and our bodies kind of give us everything that we need in this world and so that's kind of the approach that I am taking with me in like this birthing process is like my body can handle it my body knows what's best for me my baby and the earth does too like let's use oils let's use candles let's use these natural resources let's use water um let's use yoga stretches and breathing techniques and just we don't need all that medicine and that's 100 percent not to say that people who use medicine and epidurals and um you know who don't breastfeed and all that, that's just not to say that they're wrong and that they're bad parents and that they're not giving their child support or love, but that's just my point of view and that's what I want for my kid. Um, doesn't mean it's right or wrong. And then I want to do something with the placenta because, like, that was life-giving. That was life-sustaining. And I don't like the idea of it just going in the trash. It's gross. Don't get me wrong. If you've ever seen a placenta, it's nasty. But, um... It feels weird and wasteful to me to throw it away, and every other animal in this world eats it. Now, I'm not going to eat it, eat it, but I would love to encapsulate it. Um, the hospital, I think, does that, or a midwife can do that. Um, I'd love to encapsulate it and take them as pills. It increases your milk supply, and it um, can help prevent postpartum depression. And, every, like I said, every, we are animals, and every other animal, like, will eat the placenta. Like, our body gives to us, like I was saying, our body gives to us. And so, what better way to help increase milk supply and fight off depression than to just use what you were giving to your baby um, to help you, to, like, give back to yourself. I don't know, it makes sense in my mind. And I've heard you can't taste the pill, it doesn't smell bad, like, I know, like, the thought of it's kind of icky, but, like, it's an encapsulated little pill. You toss it back with some water, and that's it. 
if I were not to um, encapsulate my placenta, I would bury it in the backyard of my home and with a, pl a tree plant and help it give life to something else. Um, it was given life to my baby, and here it can give life to a plant in my backyard. So I just, I know I don't want to be wasteful with my placenta. I just, uh, it feels really wrong and weird to me to throw it in the trash. So I wouldn't do that. I definitely want um, milk bath photos. I want them when I'm pregnant um, with like flower petals, milk bath. I think it's really good for your skin as well. Kind of prevent those stretch marks um, and like provide relief because I know you can be super itchy when your belly is expanding like that. Plus it's just beautiful and it kind of like reinforces this, the, reinforces this goddess thing that I want. Um, because, like, you're making another human being. Like, I feel like you should be treated like a goddess. Like, this is super cool. Um, you're a powerful, strong individual who's doing that. I also want them with my baby. Um, taking a milk bath and flowers and stuff with my baby. And I love photos like that. Um, I definitely want a very uh, detailed pregnancy photo shoot. Um, and I want the same sort of thing postpartum. With the baby, obviously, like uh, me and my husband and the baby, or me and my husband, baby, and the sibling. Um, I want those, of course, but I also would love to do a postpartum shoot with my body because my body went through a lot and I want to own it because it's going to look very different. My boobs will look different from nursing, my belly is going to look different. Like, it's going to look different and it doesn't mean it's ugly, and I kind of want to re, like, Reclaim that in a way, I guess that's the word, reclaim it, and be like, yeah, I don't look like I did when I was 20, but I just grew another human in my body for nine months, and then I pushed it out of my vagina. I am a fucking warrior, you know what I mean? And I want to reclaim that and kind of shift this perspective and be like, it's not ugly to have changed and it's not ugly to have gained weight and to look different and um and then I'll you know I want to probably lose my baby weight like just because like that's who I am and I want to exercise and stay healthy and stay fit and feel like myself or feel normal or whatever but I know it's still never going to look exactly the same and that's okay and it doesn't mean that we're ugly and that it's not pretty and that it's not as cool um because it's way more cool now, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's way cooler because you just, like, did such an awesome thing. You just pushed a baby out of you and you gave life to this world. So it should be celebrated. And so I definitely want to reclaim that and take photos of myself and uh, own it. So that's kind of what I am, like, talking about when I mean my future birth and pregnancy experience. Um, yeah, and I would hopefully, like, have um, a significant amount of time off for um, maternity leave and postpartum care. But uh, we'll see where um, my job is and how all that is. But I think it's really important to have a maternity leave as well as a paternity leave uh, for a significant amount of time. And like I said, I know it's so subject to change as of, like, I'm 20 years old and I probably life happens. I don't know where I'll be or what will happen. But if I were to pick right now, I'd probably want to have a baby when I was like 27 or 28. Um, so like I said, that's seven or eight years away from now. And life happens. I grow, I learn, and I change. And as does our world around us. So we'll see. It's probably not going to be exactly how it is. But this is um, kind of my future hopes and goals for something that's so important to me and something that I think a lot about.